translation headset if um, you haven't done, uh, done so yet. It would be a good thing if uh, you're not uh, bilingual because I could change between French and English um, during the day. Comme je le fais en ce moment, but I will try to keep one language for some minutes at least because I know that it can be difficult for translation and for you using the translation uh, headset. Alors bonjour, veuillez entrer s'il vous plaît. Nous allons commencer la rencontre bientôt. Je vais maintenant donner la parole à mon collègue Cédric Grillerou pour s'introduire pendant que vous prenez place. Merci, merci d'être ici. Well, it's a cool. Good morning, bon matin tout le monde. So my name is Cédric Grillerou and I will be co-president and co-chair of this assembly with uh, my colleague, Wiener. As we said, as we slowly come inside, we're going to give you guys about another five minutes. A little reminder, go get your headsets in the back. Uh, there will be French during this day, uh, either from me, either from Wiener. So uh, it's part of the assembly. Donc, pour tout le monde, uh, je vous accueille aujourd'hui. Mon nom est Cédric Je suis Mi'kmaq de la communauté de l'Estigouj et co-président de l'assemblée avec ma collègue Wiener. Euh, petit rappel que cette assemblée est bien bilingue, donc allez en arrière chercher vos micros. On devrait commencer dans environ cinq minutes. We'll start in about five minutes. Thank you, everyone.
big assembly floor. The meeting or the assembly will begin soon. When you see me, it is a kind of a remi reminder that I may speak French. So if you don't have your translation headset, it is a perfect moment now to go and uh, take it at the back, um, take the, the translation headset at the back, and uh, because it will be very, very useful throughout the, the days, the coming days, today and the coming days for this uh, annual General Assembly. Alors, bonjour. Mon nom est Wina Siwi et je suis la, la coprésidente pour euh, faciliter la rencontre, les discussions qui auront lieu aujourd'hui, demain, mercredi et jeudi. Alors, le tout se déroule sur trois jours et je serai avec vous pendant ces trois journées. Mon collègue Cédric va se présenter à vous immédiatement après. Simplement pour vous dire que je suis de la nation Huron-Wendat, ainsi que membre de la communauté Anishinaabe Abitibi-Wini, qui euh, sont toutes deux situées dans la région du Québec. Euh, je suis, eh oui, je suis avocate, j'ai ce défaut, <rire> mais euh, ça peut parfois être utile. Euh, mais je suis une euh, avocate quand même sympathique, je pense, j'ai un sourire, alors euh, je vais pouvoir utiliser cette, euh, cette formation, cette expérience pour qu'on puisse tous en bénéficier, toutes et tous en bénéficier, pour pouvoir passer à travers cette assemblée de la meilleure façon qui soit et qu'on puisse se retrouver en un morceau à la fin de la semaine et pouvoir rentrer chacun chez soi avec possiblement un sourire aux lèvres et un sentiment de satisfaction, c'est ce que je vous souhaite, c'est ce que je nous souhaite. Et euh, bon, j'ai co-présidé aussi plusieurs assemblées de chefs pour la PN et la PNQL. Alors, pour moi, c'est vraiment un honneur de me retrouver ici aujourd'hui avec vous, finalement, en personne. On attendait ce moment-là depuis si longtemps. Alors, euh, I'm really, really honored to be with you today. And I will now turn the floor over to my colleague, Cedric, to introduce himself. Thank you and have a great and um, uh, great uh, assembly. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wiener. Well, good morning again, everyone. So my name is Cedric gray Luhu, and I will be one of your co-chairs for the next three days. I'm Mi'kmaq from the community of Listigurch and also the youth rep for the First Nations of Quebec and Labrador Youth Network. Uh, so it's my honor to be here alongside Wina and of course in person with you here today uh, with all the important issues that we have on our agenda, uh, finally in person. But you will notice that we also do have different members joining us on screen on both sides at some point uh, because this is a hybrid assembly. So our assembly will have in person, Zoom, and as well as a phone line uh, for, to make sure that all chiefs and proxies have the opportunity to make their voices heard during this assembly. You will also see that there are closed captions. When we speak French, they don't go that well, so take them with a grain of salt. Uh, for resolutions and other points where the wording is important, we'll make sure with our resolutions team that everything works out and that the exact words that you give us are those that are taken on the record. I just want to take the time also to speak with my uh, chiefs who are on Zoom here to my side uh, that to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to speak fairly, we will only be looking towards the raise hand function. So you click at the bottom right hand on reaction, raise hand, and that's how we'll see you pop up on our speakers list so that we can ensure that people from all across Turtle Island have the opportunity to address the assembly. You have interpretation, we'll mention it one last time, and maybe a few more during the day. Uh, in the back, just go see our technicians who are waiting beside the booth uh, to go get your headsets and translation devices. And finally, I just want to say a big thank you for having us here. Well, I'll yoke to all of you for being here, and I cannot wait to see uh, the next three days. So I'll be turning over to my speaker, Wina. Merci, Cédric. Thank you, Cédric. 
Alors, euh, je vais simplement répéter un peu en français ce que Cédric vient de dire. Euh, ce ne sera pas ce qu'on va faire tout le long de l'Assemblée. On ne répétera pas dans les deux langues, mais ce matin, je pense que ça vaut quand même la peine. Alors, c'est la première fois que nous avons une Assemblée en mode hybride. Et euh, comme je le mentionnais tantôt, ça fait trois ans qu'on ne s'est pas vu en personne. Alors, euh, c'est vraiment euh, un plaisir. J'espère de voir les gens rentrer le plus euh, rapidement possible pour qu'on puisse commencer. Mais on va commencer quand même très, très bientôt. Alors, euh, nous sommes maintenant euh, et nous remercions aussi les euh, Premières Nations hôtes euh, sur le territoire Mouskouyam, Squamish et Tsleil-Waututh. Alors, euh, c'est vraiment un honneur de se retrouver sur leur territoire euh, et, et euh, un grand merci de nous accueillir ici aujourd'hui et pour le déroulement de cette Assemblée générale annuelle. Alors, comme le mentionnait Cédric en anglais, l'Assemblée est hybride. Alors, il y a des personnes, des participants qui seront avec nous, évidemment, vous les voyez dans la salle, mais il y en aura aussi qui seront présents dans, le, dans la plateforme Zoom, donc en mode virtuel et également au téléphone. Il y a des modérateurs, modératrices de, de l'APN qui sont présents pour pouvoir euh, être présents justement à, à, et supporter les personnes qui seront au téléphone. Et euh, je rappelle que le mode pour s'adresser au coprésident, c'est vraiment d'utiliser le microphone 1, microphone 2 pour les personnes qui seront présentes dans la salle et nous n'allons pas suivre les ordres dans lesquels vous êtes arrivés au microphone. Nous allons toujours suivre le microphone 1, 2, 1, 2, si c'est ce qui est devant nous. Alors, on va alterner comme ça et on ne suivra pas les ordres d'arriver au microphone. Ce que ça veut dire, si vous voulez parler le plus vite possible, bien, vous choisissez le microphone qui a le moins de personnes. C'est simple comme ça. Alors, pour ce qui est de Zoom, Bonjour, chef et mandataire sur Zoom et euh, votre délégation. Et euh, on rappelle que nous n'allons pas, comme coprésident, regarder le chat. Alors, le chat, c'est vraiment euh, pas à être utilisé pour un amendement, par exemple, ou pour appuyer, coproposer ou proposer, coproposer un projet de résolution. Pour faire cela ou pour s'adresser à l'Assemblée, si vous êtes en mode virtuel, il s'agit vraiment d'utiliser la fonction main levée dans Zoom et d'attendre, tout comme si vous étiez au microphone, d'attendre d'être reconnu par le coprésident. Et lorsqu'il vous reconnaît, il vous donne la parole, vous pouvez vous adresser à l'Assemblée. Alors, tous les micros sont fermés tant que nous n'annonçons pas ou nous ne demandons pas d'ouvrir de, le microphone. Alors, il est maintenant... Je... Il est maintenant 8h50. Alors, merci. Thank you. Il est maintenant 8h50. The, the meeting will, not come, uh, will come to order. Alors, la réunion va commencer. Il est 8h50. Et I will ask Larry if you can please... No. I'm not sure if I'm seeing signs in the back, but okay, good, thank you. I will now ask Larry, please, to start the grand entry, and I will call upon the host drummers from Musquiam, Squamish, and Slay Waitut First Nations Territory to come for the welcome song. Alors, la chanson de bienvenue pour commencer. Merci, drummers.
Thank you, Jimmy Good. Wow. I will now call upon the host drummers for the welcome song. Thank you. 
Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. I will now call for the flags to be posted. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Alors, l'Assemblée peut commencer. The meeting will now start. Merci beaucoup. Merci de reprendre vos places, de regagner vos places, et un énorme merci pour cette grande entrée, this grand entry. Thank you so much. It was beautiful. Cela nous euh, remplit d'énergie positive pour commencer cette assemblée. Et je vais maintenant. Thank you. Je vais maintenant demander à mon collègue. Cédric de venir me rejoindre pour annoncer le prochain, prochain point. Alors, Cédric, à toi. Oui, oui. So, good morning, everyone. We're like Pug. Uh, as you take your seats slowly, I just want to acknowledge our drummers, our dancers, our knowledge keepers and our flag carriers, and as well as our regional chiefs and national chief for being here with us today. To start us off in a good way, I'd like to introduce to you guys knowledge keeper Dr. Gwendolyn Point, as well as Dr. Robert Joseph for an opening prayer to help us start this assembly with the good energy and the wise words from those who came before us. If I can have Dr. Gwendolyn Point, and Dr. Robert Joseph coming to the stage. Yes, it's just called. Housekeeper. To hear Talito, to hear Talito, Shaisko at the Homel to Squee, and Halkamil the Homel to Stalo. I'm not sure if our dear elder Bobby is here, if he's out there. But I take it all to each one of you, this, my hands raised, and say thank you and welcome. Take it all to our Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam for leading us in and welcoming welcoming each and every one of us to their traditional territories. Creator of all good things, I give you thanks for this day. I give you thanks for each one that is here with us. Creator, I ask, I give you thanks and that you walk with us today and this week. Special blessing 
on our leaders that are here. Special blessings on the ATIs, the work at hand. And Yais, the work we do is sacred. Creator, special blessings on those that have traveled from afar to be here, that their homes are safe, their families are safe and healthy. Creator, I give you thanks today for each one again. I give you thanks for the staff that have taken care of us, the BC AFN staff and the AFN office staff that have done the work to bring us together. And to bring our minds and our hearts together to stay strong in your mind, in your heart, to have that good mind and that good heart. Special blessings to each one. Hi, Chip, see Knowledge Keeper, Dr. Gwendolyn Point. I would look towards my staff and see is uh, Knowledge Keeper, Dr. Robert Joseph with us. I don't believe so, eh? So now for the welcoming of our host communities. Merci. Thank you so much. À la gardienne du savoir, Dr. Gwendolyn Point, pour ses mots d'ouverture, sa, sa, ses prières d'accueil et euh, de nous permettre de commencer cette assemblée de la meilleure façon qui soit, avec des enseignements remplis de sagesse qui seront porteurs tout au long de cette assemblée. Merci. Et je vais maintenant inviter les Premières Nations hôtes de cette assemblée générale annuelle à venir nous rejoindre sur le, sur le podium et donner leur mot d'accueil. I will now invite the welcome, the welcome statements, openings by host officials, and I now invite Chief Wayne Sparrow to join me on the stage, please, at the microphone assembly. Thank you. I'm Chief Wayne Sparrow, elected chief of Musqueam First Nation. It gives me a privilege and honor to stand in front of each and every one of you and welcome you here to our shared territory, the Musqueam, Squamish, and Salatooth. I want to acknowledge the uh, national chief, regional chief, and respected chiefs that are in this room, but I also want to acknowledge our elders standing outside and seeing our elders walking around gives such a good feeling. And uh, our drummers, singers that bring us in in a good way. I'm gonna keep my comments very short because I have my cousins that are standing behind me that are also going to do it. And I'm gonna ask each and every one in the room to be very respectful. When I came in, I had some of the elders come up there was some signs that were there that are not appropriate in our territory, no matter what your opinion is. To see words like that is very hurtful to our, our elders and our leaders. So I'm asking each and every one to be very respectful and make the wishes of all of our elders. Thank you. Thank you, merci, Chef Sparrow. I now invite 
Chairperson Kelselim, Kelselim, sorry, to address the SME. Thank you. Tinoyap, Sayam, Tinoyap, San Anakoito, Hearts and Squaw Winds Quins, A Quatch no me up, Tisquile Tit Seats, Hearts and Squaw Winds Quins, Esfael Shasko, Tasiam, Kumatsquim, Stalmuk, it to Siam, Saleh with Old Stalmuk, it's sauce to mail, eight tea, to Kumatsquim, it to Swatmish, it to Saleh with Old, Chip Quinman, El. Eoch Swat wa eighty. Amen. On slate quince at so to know ya. Che wa into Awen Nate Eoch to Smanham. A qui hame to Melchior. A qui out stalmoch. Eoch Swat to Muntman to Ocho Melch. Nate na. Tima, Kriswa A, Askakonewas, Chitwa Sets Apni, to Quetzi Wit, Swa Amchit. Whereas Chin Kwan Man, Eok, Tanoyap, Siam, E.T., E. Hartson's Pawin, E. Quis, Tlak No Mot Eat Seeds. Tma, Tight, Tma, Quigan Snatchem. Dear friends and relatives, I really raise my hands to each and every one of you for being here. I want to thank my dear relatives, Chief Wayne Sparrow, Chief Jen Thomas, my, my respected colleagues. We are from the three nations of this land, Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh. Our three nations have lived in this territory for thousands of years. We are three families with distinct histories as three distinct peoples with our own histories throughout this land. Stories, connections, our names come from these places around here, our lineage comes from these places around here, and we're woven together as three nations in this territory of, of Vancouver. And I'm really honored to stand here on the stage with my relatives on behalf of Squamish Nation, where I'm the elected chairperson behalf of my council, my elders, my people, to welcome you all here to the shared territory of our three nations. I'm really honored to have all the leaders here. I want to raise my hands to the BCAFN who approached the three nations following that protocol and asked, can we host the first in-person AGA after this, through this pandemic in over two years? Can we host it in your territory? And they came and asked us for our permission to do that. And we gave it and we worked together to, ho to help put on this wonderful event for all of us to come together to bring that true spirit that we have from our people who have sent us to be here, from our ancestors who have laid down that path for us to follow in their footsteps and to carry on that good work, and for those future generations who need us to be successful at what we're doing for them as leaders. For those future generations who aren't here yet, who need us to work together, to achieve results, to make things happen, to benefit our people. And I raise my hands to each and every one of you, whether you're here as a political representative, as a staff, as an observer, to come here and give part of your life to this work. And I raise my hands and thank you for that. Here in this territory, our three nations have come together. We established a protocol agreement amongst our three nations to help formalize the ancient family connections that we've had for thousands of years, to work together, to have good governance in place, to support our nations creating benefits for our people. And just as an example of that, we've been recognized in the Vancouver Magazine as one of the most powerful groups in Vancouver. Because we came together and created good governance, our three nations are the largest private landowner in Vancouver that we're able to do that. And that's my message today for all of us to think about, is what is the good governance that we need in the AFN to be able to achieve those results, 
to have that positive impact for our communities. I really want to raise my hands to National Chief and thank her for putting her name forward in the recent election. I want to thank her for being here. And I know that we have some hard work ahead, but I, I for myself, call in the teachings of this land, this place that has taught our people for so long to help us through these times. And I raise my hands again to each and every one of you, to all the organizers who helped make this happen. And I just, in the bottom of my heart, I, I feel really grateful to be here with each and every one of you to do really important work for our communities. We'll see you. Thank you very much, Kelselim. And now I invite Chief Jen Thomas, Slee with the Nation. Thank you. Thank you and good morning and welcome on behalf of MST and on behalf of Slave Tooth Nation. I want to thank the drummers and singers for opening us in a good way. When they sing our songs, it's medicine. It brings our ancestors to the room. So thank you for that. Thank you to the regional chief, Terry Chiji, and national chief, Roseanne for always honoring our MST protocol and remembering the three nations here in Vancouver. It, uh, it really does go a long way. When we work together and stay together, there's positive outcomes. I look forward to positive changes with all of you, all the leaders across Canada. We have to work together and stay together because we do it for our people, for our members, for our elders, for our youth, and for our future generations. That's, that's what I'm hoping for, that we can do. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Chief Thomas. Merci, c'est ce qui conclut nos mots d'accueil par les Premières Nations. Haute, thank you, merci. And I will now turn the floor over to Cedric. Well, to our host chiefs and chairpersons. So now we will go towards our territorial welcome, and I would like to invite Regional Chief of the BCAFN, Terry TG. Merci, Cédric. Teneza, Tsekuza, Skyza, Tsemoyget, Tsemanak, Tsemoyget. Chiefs, hereditary chiefs, regional chiefs, national chief, elders, youth, residential school survivors, residential school intergenerational survivors delegates. I first of all want to thank Chief Wayne Sparrow, Chief Jen Thomas, and Kassilia for allowing me to do this business on their territory. The unceded, unsurrendered, continually occupied territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh, the Coast Salish people, Big thank you, Masi Cho, for allowing us to, to do this very important business here over the next three days. It's been a long two years since we last met in person in 2019, the AFN AGA. And during those two years, our people in this province of British Columbia and in this country we call Canada, demonstrated and showed their resilience during this COVID-19 pandemic. A hundred years ago, our ancestors didn't fare too well during the Spanish flu. And we've lost many loved ones a hundred years ago. And, and like then, so did we over the last two years. I want to acknowledge all those that we've lost to this pandemic and all those that we've lost 
because of the opioid crisis, the other pandemic that we are, our people, the Indigenous peoples are overrepresented. And all the many other issues, the social issues that we are tasked with to deal with and represent here as Assembly of First Nations and as chiefs and as leaders in the best way forward. And as we continue to find more and more children in grave sites, and what we've seen in Tecumlif to the 215 that really began the discussions of the issues of the residential school system, it becomes quite clear that the healing journey continues on. And this, the theme, walk the healing path. We are all walking that healing path as we come out of this pandemic and continue to deal with issues such as the residential school system. And during this AGA, we will recognize those that went to the Vatican to witness the apology of, of the Pope and also here in Canada, in Edmonton, in Quebec City, and in the Iqaluit. Really important discussions as we continue to find more and more children, grave sites, well over 10,000 in Canada and the United States. And certainly what we've seen over the last few weeks here at the Assembly of First Nations is that there is much work to do with the AFN to fix the foundations of the AFN. And with my, the National Chief and our colleagues, uh, the Regional Chiefs, we're willing to do that work. I appreciate my British Columbia Chiefs, Team BC, as we went back to our caucus rooms to think about what are those solutions? And I really thank them for providing insight, leadership, and recommendations to move forward. And I'll do that as, as, as a regional chief of British Columbia, and I'll, I'll share that with my colleagues from different regions. And we do have the a film tonight, The Doctrine of Recovery, that I hope you all stay and watch. A really important discussion and documentary about our Indigenous experience. I want to thank my board of directors when I approached them. Cook P. Roseanne Kazmir, Chief Linda Price, Chief Elaine Moore, Chief Harvey McLeod, Chief Jerry Jack. I asked them, what do you think about hosting the Assembly of First Nations AGM once again? Well, little did I know, I was the only one that put the name forward, and, and here we are in this beautiful place we call Vancouver to meet with well over 2,300 registered, perhaps even more, not only virtually, but here in person to, to really have these important discussions about the future of the Assembly of First Nations, but also the important work that needs to be done, the agreement in principle for the $40 billion, one of the, the highest compensations we've ever seen in the history of Canada, the United Nations Declaration for the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, that is law. We need to do these, these important work over the next few days to, to make some decisions and move forward in our relationship with the colonial government. I certainly thank all of my chiefs for being here, all of you for coming to this beautiful place, this, the Coast Salish Territory, the place we call Vancouver, to have these really important discussions. And lastly, I want to, I want to thank my wife and my children uh, for allowing me to, to do this important work on behalf of British Columbia. And, and thank you. I'm, I'm very optimistic that we can do the important work that is necessary 
because quite simply it's not about us in this room it's it's about the people and how we move forward to represent them in a good way thank you thank you Wiener Cedric Masicho thank you big thank you Thank you, Regional Chief DG, for your welcoming remarks. And I will now invite the National Chief just to give her welcoming remarks, but we will have the, 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 the opportunity to heal her later on today. So thank you, National Chief. Thank you very much, Wina. What's your name, Rosanna Archibald, Tishnika, Sintel, Kotagamosh, Nakata, Gochian, Monash Kokoyas, Kashketan, Kishinimoyan, Sakuchmaka, Nakaskanomas, and Kishinita, Yinimoyan. First, I want to acknowledge the Creator, the world around us, and our place within it. I am very grateful to the three nations who have welcomed us with their protocols and songs and dance. I want to say miigwech to all of you chiefs who have traveled across this country to be here, to look at all of the issues that are in front of us. And I want to thank all the chiefs and proxies who are online, listening in, looking toward a positive future for our people. This meeting is a seminal meeting. This meeting is a historical meeting. And I know that we will be able to walk through this in a good way together. And so there has been a lot that will be, there will be a lot that will be discussed later. And I won't touch on any of those things right now because this is about welcoming you and thanking you for being here. Thanking you for the work and sacrifice that you have done in your communities and the work that you are doing here today. I wanted to also address these signs that I, everybody knows me, I don't swear. And I'm totally against cussing. And I sometimes find that when people are swearing, it's a form of uh, violence. It's a form of verbal violence. And so anybody who wrote things that are negative or putting down others, I disavow that. Those are not the people that support me. The people that support me want change. The people that support me want to see us walk forward together in a good way. The people that support me love and care for our people. And so I'm standing here today to welcome you and let you know that I love and care for each one of you in this room. And I love and have a deep and abiding love and care for all of our people. And that's a quote that I got from Grand Chief Doug Kelly. And that's what we have to walk forward with in this meeting, is to hold that space in our hearts for a deep and abiding love and care, to hold that space in our hearts for healing, to hold that space in our hearts to make sure that this meeting and this organization meets the objectives of helping our people. So as national chief, I remain committed to that. And that's why I'm here today. That's why I walked into this room with the Eagle staff. It's why I drove across this country to get here. So miigwech, I'm really looking forward to our discussions and I'm really grateful uh, for the opportunity to be able to address the difficult issues we will address today and then let's get on with the business of what we need to do to look toward the future for our people. Let's move ahead together. Miigwech. Thank you, National Chief. Thank you. Merci. Chief Miigwech. Alors, j'aimerais maintenant inviter à venir présenter le rapport du Conseil Des gardiens du savoir. Uh, it is now my honor to uh, invite the knowledge keepers and please 
welcome Dr. Gwendolyn Point, uh, sorry, Gwendolyn Point to come on the stage and join us to give her report. Dr. Point, I see her just there, so. And I also invite Charles Hume, the chair, co-chair of the Knowledge Keepers chair, to give their reports. It will be uh, the time for them to present and address the assembly and give their reports. Thank you. Merci. Good morning, and um, again, this is thank you. I'm with my co-chair uh, for the Knowledge Keeper, AFN Knowledge Keepers, Chuck Hume. Um, want to acknowledge our two MCs, Rena and um, Cedric, for taking care of us. And before we start, I'd like, um, we have knowledge keepers from every region and they're sitting here at the table. If you don't mind standing up. And I uh, really want to say thank you to Eldon Bernard, um, our knowledge keeper uh, who took care of us for the last few years and held the chair position because of COVID. And thank you, thank you, Alda. So my traditional name is Shaiskawit, and the language we speak is Halkamalum. And I come from the Stolo territory, uh, just upriver. And it's really special to be here with our relatives from Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and um, Musqueam. The songs this morning, it was so special to hear the songs bringing us in. And I can remember the first song that I heard was from my grandmother as a child. But, you know, they were stories. What you see today, the regalia, and hearing the songs, that wasn't a part of certainly our growing up. No one spoke our language. There was no regalia. There was no ceremony. So to witness that today and to see the different regalia that people are wearing, that representing who they are, is pretty special. So it really is an honor to stand here with the knowledge keepers from across Canada. And I know Bobby Joe would be here with us. And I thank the leader. It was Shane, Regional Chief Shane Godfredson that came to my home a few years ago. And he asked me if I would be the elder, the woman elder for BC. And at that time, I, I told him I, I would not say no. But I told him I still had elders in my family, my aunt, both sides of my family, my dad's side, my mom's side, including my mother-in-law, who today is 94. So to be called an elder was really difficult for me. So I was grateful when the term knowledge keeper 
was coined. And I can tell you, I can tell you I'm proud to be Huomuk. I'm proud to be Huomuk. And I'm grateful to each and every one of you for your ATIs, for your good work. So I was brought on as a BC AFN knowledge keeper in 2015, I believe. And I've learned so much from the knowledge keepers across Canada. And the report we have is the work that we've done over the last year. So they asked me to bring special greetings to each one of you, the chiefs, the proxies, the technicians, the Quad Council members, and First Nation representatives. And the knowledge keepers have been a part of the AFN since its foundation. Our council provides spiritual and political guidance to staff at all levels of the organization. For more than 40 years, and as a long-standing pillar of the AFN Charter, Knowledge Keepers have offered a calming influence to the leadership and the organization, grounded in our ceremonies and our teachings. We keep our traditions, values, languages, and history at the forefront of everything we do. It is our obligation to ensure success and the well-being of our youth, just as our ancestors did for us. And it is our pleasure to welcome the new portfolio holder for the Knowledge Keepers, the Northwestern uh, Territories Regional Chief Gerald Anton. We look forward to working together with him on our shared priorities and goals. And I share this with Knowledge Keeper Chuck Hume. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Gwen. Uh, traditionally, I, I come from the Yukon Territory. My uh, parents thought it best, you know, that uh, all of us children be naturally born. So we're all born in different places within the Dalton Post region. And this region here was uh, belonged to the uh, Tlingit ancestry coming from Dry Bay. Both of my grandparents were hereditary chiefs in that traditional territory. And uh, henceforth, I learned my language until I was about six years old and then some scary moments took over and uh, winding up with our family being split apart and uh, residential schools stepped in, took us, uh, took us away. And our family in the end result wound up with three different churches. So none of us kids went to the same, same school and they made sure of that. But henceforth, we, I came out and uh, uh, left the Yukon Territory and I left for quite a while. Coming back, my mother had passed on, my grandparents had passed on but I had finished my education, which was the main, my main goal. And uh, I became an electrician. I did all of this myself. And my dad, of course, he uh, uh, worked on the Haynes Road. The uh, military having to give up his status to work for the military at the time. So we came, we became non-status and a uh, whole raft of things again took place over our lives. And my grandmother always said, you know, some, sometimes she says, you're gonna come back home, and which I did. 
but it uh, split our family. And uh, over the years, you know, I, I still ponder on things like that. I've never ever asked the government, you know, for uh, residential school dollars. I just told them to keep it. I was pretty disgusted. And I still am today. But uh, right now, I'm, uh, I used to uh, be a counselor for the Champagnasiac First Nations, which is self-governing First Nations. Negotiated the, uh, the uh, Yukon land claims along with four others and uh, never looked back. Also uh, started up the Pacific Salmon Treaty and again, we, uh, I stayed there for almost 20 years negotiating against the uh, U.S. counterparts. And I think, you know, when I look back at the time and hours, you know, spent at the table, I still managed to do, to do my job as an electrician. And after a while, I thought, well, it's time for a change after 22 years being an electrician. I thought, well, I'm going to be a renewable resources. So I took law enforcement and became a national park warden and finished off my time. Uh, again, uh, 19 and a half years as a national park warden. So I've uh, spent my time. I've hooked up most of your communities in the Yukon with uh, power, built power lines, ran the hydro dams, and uh, quite a bit of interesting stuff. But, you know, right now today I have uh, uh, 24 grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren. I have five generations in my family now. And uh, the wife keeps saying, well, why don't you slow down? Well, there's, there's a younger generation that I always think of. You know, they have to learn what I learned. And uh, I have to, I'm the teacher now for my grandchildren. And that's what I want to do. And I have a little cabin now in Plukshu that I go back to during the summer or time, spare time that I, that I want to. But the uh, knowledge keepers, we met in mid-May and held an election and uh, Gwen Point and I were appointed the chair positions. Over the past year, we worked on a presentation of the draft Indi Indigenous Knowledge Systems Framework by the AFN and officials of at Environment and Climate Change Canada. The Knowledge Keepers Council reviewed, discussed, and dissected the framework to ensure its accuracy. Protocol, tradition, and tradition. We then met jointly with officials of the ECC to share our viewpoints and more precise comments on the knowledge systems framework. This meeting also allowed us to discuss next steps and identify potential obstacles. Several of the points of our interest which may continue from this included addressing the legacy of shattered treaties, promises, domination, racism, and discrimination, and how Indigenous knowledge will be used and protected in the future. We also released a statement and very direct assessment to the Government of Canada on the long-standing fishing disputes and harassment taking place in the Atlantic Canada. We want to be clear, First Nations fishermen, rights must be recognized and respected. The Council also addressed the COVID-19 pandemic and also delivered a message urging First Nations peoples to return to their ancestral lands, to social distance themselves, and to encourage health and safety. Number one priority. 
knowledge keepers stood with the with and continue to provide spiritual support to their communities, chiefs, and members who were witness to the findings of the horrible genocide and legacy of the institutions and assimilation and genocide in Canada during this very difficult year. Our council continues to meet via Zoom and teleconference calls to update and keep others informed of activities within their respective regions and to continue to the overall efforts of the AFM, AFN staff, executive committee, and First Nations. The council has continued to meet virtually, biannually, at the AGAs and SCAs to discuss issues and challenges facing the Council and to bring together new ideas. We are also engaging and trying to help other elders within their regions by sharing information and ensuring that everyone is kept to date on issues impacting us all. Currently, we are expanding the role of the Council and representing regions with the appointment of regional representatives document. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chuck. Uh, the Council, uh, to conclude, the Council will continue to provide the assistance to the AFN Executive Committee AFN staff, AFN chiefs committees, and to continue to provide support, guidance, and vision to all Quad Council activities. The AFN maintains its support and efforts of the Knowledge Keepers Council. It is essential that First Nation ceremonies and perspectives are reflected in all the work done regionally and nationally, and to fully integrate the input and participation of the Council into all its work. Uh, we have met throughout the pandemic, as Chuck has said, and um, we have did our best to support and provide guide, spiritual guidance and guidance. With that, uh, we're wishing each one of you um, a safe and healthy week and um, to Iathalitzel special blessings on the work at hand. Haitik. I'd like to start off by saying thanks to our knowledge keepers for their update on their council. We thought it was important to start with our knowledge keepers really on top of an open prayer to really have that energy, that wisdom, and that knowledge that comes from them to share with the assembly and really start us off in a good way. So Laliog, thank you to Dr. Gwen Point and uh, Chuck Hume. This assembly is an assembly of many firsts. Uh, it is our first hybrid assembly. As you see, uh, once in a while when a chief opens their camera, they pop up on screen. Uh, as a reminder to those on Zoom, uh, you will appear on screen if you do open your camera. <laughs> Thank you, Chief Sellers. And another first that we have this year <laughs> is uh, the introduction of uh, accessibility and disability inclusion in our assemblies uh, today here at this AGA but also in our future meetings. We're working hard on creating an environment that is accessible to all of our brothers and sisters no matter uh, their disabilities or their specific needs. So today is an important opportunity to open uh, our assemblies and introduce sign language into our process. We will be having a five to eight minute quick crash course on uh, different uh, words, phrases that can be used in sign language to make sure that we are as open and accessible to anyone. 
You'll find in your kits a one-pager. I do believe it looks something like this that has certain moves. Okay. So, and at the same time, we also have a few speakers here with us today. So if we have our sign language team who can make their way slowly to the stage. We have uh, with us today Dominique Ireland, who's an accessibility advocate, a young First Nations advocate for American Sign Language, but more importantly for Oneida Sign Language, which was to me a surprise that our own languages can be spoken through sign. Dominique Ireland is from the Oneida Nation of the Thane Settlement, a member of the Turtle Clan, and has dedicated her life to her people, her culture, but most importantly, her language. We're also equally excited to introduce Debbie Parliament of Connecting Interpreting Services and her team of American Sign Language, as well as Langue des Signes Québec uh, translators. So let's give Dominique and her team a warm welcome. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you for the introduction. It's really an honor to be here today. Um, and I am very honored to be here with all of you. Thank you to, uh, for our opening prayer earlier, as well as the Knowledge Keepers for sharing with us. We do have a PowerPoint um, that maybe we can share with everyone so we can review some signs. I think it's um, I think it's important that we know that there are sign languages um, across uh, across these lands and Turtle Island, as well as the world. I think it's important for everyone to um, be aware of that. There's a couple of dates that are important. Uh, September 20th through the 27th is uh, is Sign Language Awareness Week. Also, September 23rd is the International Day of Sign Language, which is recognized globally. And November is Indigenous uh, Disability Awareness Month. Uh, that an organization uh, began in 2015. So it just inf I just wanted to be sure that to share some information with all of you regarding uh, important dates to be aware of and that you can celebrate in your own communities, recognizing your peoples who may have disabilities or may use sign language. So today um, I'm gonna be teaching you a couple of signs. So this is Oneida Sign Language. This sign, my thumb pointing in, my hands together. So if we could do it together. In English, this means my family. The next phrase, again, the thumb pointing in your hand on your chest and your hand on your shoulder. I'll do it again. In English, this means grandmother. And our third sign 
do it again. Translated into English, my grandfather. So these are important, important uh, terms or signs that we have in our language when we're, especially when we're opening a, a gathering such as this one. Grandmother, uh, part of the sign is the hand is on the breast. Because the mother feeds her children. And she does that from her breast, but she does it from her heart. And father, the hand is moved closer to the chest because they keep their family and their people dear to their heart. So this is the, or the origins of, of the Oneida sign. And so in always, we always have our grandmothers and our grandfathers behind us. And so the hand on the shoulder indicates that they are always there with us. So grandmother, a hand on the breast and then hand on the shoulder, and grandfather, a hand in the middle of the chest and hand on the shoulder. Thank you to each of you for allowing me the time with you this morning. I, I'm looking forward to the remainder of the AGA and the rest of our time together. Yonko. So we'll all look to our team who's here uh, again as a new first uh, in this assembly and one that will be brought forward by the Assembly of First Nations for future meetings also, making really this a place of discussion between all our brothers, sisters and cousins. Another first that I mentioned earlier is the fact that we're in hybrid mode. So we had a few people popping up behind us uh, earlier. So we have uh, chiefs joining us by Zoom and they also have the possibility of joining us by phone lines. Once again, trying to make this as accessible for people from all across Turtle Island. This means that we do have certain processes that will have to be updated. Uh, and we wanted to go through what a test resolution could look like, uh, just to make sure that everyone's on the same page, that we're all aware of this process, uh, since there are a few little changes. The first step hasn't changed. We'll ask our technical team to bring up our test resolution that you guys will see on screens, as well as our Zoom members who have access to this screen too. We'll go through uh, this very famous in the past three years resolution. Uh, we will go through the title as co-chairs. So for test vote DR00, entitled Pineapple on Pizza. We will go towards our mover and seconder, make sure that they're in the room with us or on Zoom uh, with us, read through, therefore be it resolved the whereas due to time constraints you have access to them in your packages uh, so we won't be going through them necessarily we will then go towards a discussion period we have three moves or three ways to address the assembly the first one is as weena mentioned microphone one and microphone two so once we open the discussion period you come up to the microphone and we will be going back from one to the next uh, if you want to talk go to the shortest line, that's your best chance. To make sure that our chiefs who are joining us on the Zoom platform also have an opportunity. Chiefs, I would invite you to use the raise hand function. This is the only way that the chairs will be able to give you uh, the right to address the assembly. Again, bottom right hand, you have reactions. You click on that, raise hand, and we'll take care of the rest. We have a list of speakers and Zoom wonderfully keeps them compiled uh, with regards to who came first. And our final option that we have to address is by phone line. So we're working with our team that you see running around here uh, that is gonna keep us informed if anyone is on the phone line that wishes to address the floor. Once we close discussion period and we go towards question, this is where there are two ways to vote. For those in person here in the assembly, nothing's changed, we're doing it the old school way. We'll ask you to raise your lanyards for, against, and abstentions. 
We'll ask you to raise your hands and keep them raised because our counting team has about 105 seats per area uh, that they have to count through. So we'll give you uh, a warning when it's okay to put your hands down. We'll be working with our distribution team to do all this count. For those on Zoom, it's quite easy. It's a poll. So you saw it pop up earlier. Uh, there's going to be a poll for against abstain where the chiefs and only the chiefs, uh, this is validated by our team. Here you see it can vote. You will see the results live as they come in. So let's try one out. For therefore be it resolved that the Chiefs and Assembly, one, Chiefs affirm that pineapple on pizza is superior. I will ask that the Zoom vote be opened. Our Zoom Chiefs, you can vote now on the Zoom platform. And those in the Assembly who are against uh, this uh, resolution, please raise your lanyards. Some of you went really fast. <laughs> Others are really indifferent. <laughs> we give a chance to our distribution team to count, blah, blah, blah. We do the same thing. The Chiefs and Assembly who are for, please raise your lanyards. We give them the time to count. Chief White Duck, I saw you. <laughs> and finally, we do the same thing, ask you to lower your lanyards and go to those who abstain, please raise your lanyards. Distribution team counts. Once all of this is done, our distribution team will work with the technicians, with the people around, to compile the votes from Zoom, from the floor, and from the phone lines, compile them together, and bring them up to us on stage where we will be able to announce whether the resolution has passed or has been rejected. Quick reminder, it takes a 60% of voting as a four for it to go forward. Uh, we know we'll be able to talk about this in the next section on rules and procedures. In this case, I think it passed, let's say, sure. That's about it for the test vote. We just wanted you guys to see it visually, to experience it. Uh, if you like pineapple on your pizza, good for you. If you don't, good for you too. And on to our next section, uh, which is more procedural for the adoption of rules and procedures. I'd like to invite Weena to address the stage. Alors, c'est vraiment agréable de tous euh, et toutes et tous vous voir aujourd'hui en personne. Ça faisait longtemps. Merci d'être là et merci à nos personnes, à nos, à nos participants au mode virtuel. Euh, c'est ce qui est, euh, c'est la chance que nous amène la technologie de pouvoir se réunir, même si on ne peut pas se déplacer, mais au moins, si on veut se déplacer en ce moment, on peut. Alors, merci pour ça. Nous sommes maintenant rendus à l'adoption des règles de procédure. As you noticed, I'm speaking in, Ang in French, sorry. So, if you don't have your headset, translation headset, it would be a good thing for you to use it or to uh, go and take it in the back. Uh, because I will try to do this in French, but I will include some uh, English because I've been requested to um, provide some French, uh, some parts of French in this assembly, the usual. So I respect what I have uh, been mandated to do. <laughs> Alors, on va poursuivre. Et maintenant, en fonction de la règle 26 des procédures, et vous trouverez les procédures de l'Assemblée disponibles en ligne sur le site de l'APN, en anglais et en français. Et les règles sont très similaires euh, aux années antérieures et, pro, et, et prévoient des règles pour euh, les assemblées en mode virtuel et hybride et en personne. Comme on est en mode hybride, on va passer un peu de, de, de temps pour regarder qu quelles sont les règles applicables pour un mode hybride. Mais comme vous le savez, on doit adopter les règles de procédure par voie de motion et on va ensuite donc, on va passer au vote et il y aura, bien, il y aura une période de discussion, évidemment, avant le vote, c'est requis. Et après, nous allons passer à l'adoption de l'agenda. Donc, l'agenda sera présenté par Cédric et adopté de façon distincte. 
Alors, dans votre livret de conférence, in your conference booklet, j'aimerais rappeler certaines règles qui sont très importantes et j'aimerais prendre le temps de vous les pointer. Alors, si on, voit, on va à l'article 15 des règles de procédure, cet article est à la page 4, je crois, si je ne m'abuse, non, pardon, 3. Alors, on comprend que les représentants inscrits, c'est vraiment important que seules les personnes inscrites comme chef et mandataire ou mandataire sont réputées être représentants inscrits. Alors, c'est une assemblée de chefs et seulement les chefs et mandataires sont autorisés à venir s'adresser à l'Assemblée en utilisant le microphone de l'Assemblée ou les mains levées dans Zoom. Donc, euh, si un chef souhaite donner son temps de parole à quelqu'un, si un chef souhaite inviter quelqu'un, si cette personne est reconnue par le président de l'Assemblée, euh, cette personne pourra parler à ce moment-là exceptionnellement, sauf que faut comprendre, c'est très important que le chef qui donne son droit de parole perd son droit de parole pour cette portion de l'agenda. Alors, euh, il, il ne peut pas donner son droit de parole et parler lui aussi. C'est très important à comprendre, c'est ce qui est dans les règles. Alors ensuite, au niveau du quorum, et ça c'est très important, le quorum aujourd'hui c'est l'article 23 des règles. Et dans l'article 23, on va aller directement à la portion qui est pour le mode hybride. Alors pour le mode hybride, on voit ici si la séance est virtuelle ou à la fois virtuelle et en personne, ce qui est le cas. Le quorum exige une majorité de représentants inscrits, tel que cela a été établi lors de la première journée par l'inscription et lors des autres journées, donc jour 2, jour 3. Le quorum va être établi selon la majorité. Juste un petit instant, par et lors de la, des journées subséquentes, donc le nombre de représentants inscrits présents dans la salle, en ligne et au téléphone, donc selon les trois modes de l'Assemblée, tel que cela aurait été établi une heure avant l'heure prévue du début de la séance ou à une autre heure précisée par le président. Alors, ensuite de ça, très important, hein, les, 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 euh, les règles prévoient vraiment le rôle des co-chairs, des co-présidents, puis notre règle, c'est vraiment... On est là, en fait, pour vous aider à passer au travers l'agenda, faciliter les discussions pour que ce soit agréable, que l'atmosphère soit sécuritaire pour tout le monde, puis qu'on puisse protéger, en fait, aussi la minorité qui ose peut-être moins s'exprimer ou qui ne peuvent s'exprimer moins. Donc, ce n'est pas de protéger certaines personnes, mais vraiment l'ensemble de la salle pour que vous partiez d'ici heureux et satisfait du travail accompli. Ensuite de ça, donc, on pourra, s'il y a lieu, euh, avoir recours à euh, l'avocat de la PN si euh, un point d'ordre est demandé. Euh, on pourra gérer à ce moment-là. Et ensuite de ça, bon, des autres articles, il y a 32, 33 qui résument un peu ce que je vous ai dit et 42 et 43 qui sont importants aussi. Alors, euh, quand vous venez vous adresser à l'Assemblée, c'est important de dire en premier, de, de dire votre nom, votre première nation, ou votre communauté et dire si vous êtes un proxy, un mandataire. C'est important de dire si vous n'êtes pas un chef aussi, donc chef ou mandataire. Et aussi, je vais vous demander, surtout pour aujourd'hui, ce sera important lorsqu'on va adresser des résolutions, de mentionner lorsque vous venez au micro si vous comptez parler pour ou parler contre la résolution ou c'est simplement un commentaire euh, neutre. Alors, c'est important de le mentionner, ça va nous aider et ça va aider toute la salle à bien comprendre euh, les interventions. Et parce que j'anticipe qu'il y en aura quand même aujourd'hui euh, un peu, alors ce sera important. Alors, maintenant que j'ai expliqué ces principales règles pour euh, l'Assemblée, je vais maintenant demander... Ah oui, merci, mon coprésident, merci beaucoup. Alors, j'ai des informations importantes pour vous. J'ai le quorum. Alors, le quorum est de 50 221 représentants inscrits. Et pour qu'une résolution ad soit adoptée aujourd'hui, le jour 1, donc 60 donne 265 représentants. Alors, vous avez les informations pour les résolutions qui seront présentées, les projets de résolution qui seront présentés un peu plus tard. Alors,
j'aimerais maintenant annoncer que la motion, si on peut mettre aussi la motion pour l'adoption des règles de procédure à l'écran. If you can please put the motion to adopt the rules of procedures to up on the screen, please. I'm not asking you in the room, I'm asking to the technician. <laughs> so, technician, please. And I'm not sure if you have this, but maybe you don't have. Doesn't matter. It's, je m'excuse, j'ai encore tourné, changé à l'anglais. Alors, je vais continuer au français. Alors, de toute façon, on est en train d'adopter la motion pour les règles de procédure 2020 de l'Assemblée générale annuelle 2022. I'm now looking for a mover for, the, for this motion. J'aimerais avoir un proposeur dans la salle. Est-ce que quelqu'un veut bien proposer cette motion pour adopter les règles de procédure pour l'Assemblée annuelle 2022? I'm looking for a mover. Who's the winner? Uh, please, not all in the same time because it's, uh, it's going to take time. Merci. Oh, le microphone numéro deux, s'il vous plaît, si vous pouvez ouvrir le micro, please. Microphone number two. Good morning, Wiener. I'm from British Columbia. I barely speak English. Didn't understand a word you said, except you're looking for a mover for adoption of the rules and procedures of the assembly. My name is Doug Kelly. I'm a proxy for Chief Randy Leon Kokakapilt, which is in Chilliwack. So moved. Thank you so much, Chief. Uh, but I think you understood the, the gist of what I said because you got it perfect. <laughs> Thank you. So we have a mover. On a proposer et on a un co-proposer, je crois. Alors, microphone numéro un, s'il vous plaît. Microphone number one, please. If you can put the... We need microphone number one. OK. Chef Gérard Duquette, uh, La Bande de la Première Nation de Dokis. Chief Gérard Duquette from Dokis First Nation. I second the motion. Uh, the only thing, I understand French, but if we read the captions that are going up, uh, I can't even read that. So <laughs> just uh, bear with everyone. Uh, or get your uh, headset because uh, I understand every word, but I can't read what's said on the. So. Thank you so much. Merci to second this uh, motion and to support my uh, advice, my earlier advice to please go and take a headset uh, if you need it because it will be needed, be needed throughout uh, the day and uh, the coming days as well. Alors, merci. On a notre, notre proposeur et coproposeur pour adopter le projet d'adoption, justement, de, des règles de procédure. Et nous allons maintenant ouvrir la période de discussion. Est-ce qu'il y a des discussions? Est-ce que c'est nécessaire d'ouvrir la période de discussion ou on peut passer au vote? Alors, je regarde sur Zoom. Je ne vois aucune main levée. I'm looking now on the Zoom platform and there's no he uh, raised hand. I'm not Yes, thank you, question. Thank you, and I will, as a chair, I will accept this because I'm see, I see no one at the microphone. So, est-ce que quel, le, nous allons passer au vote, donc on ouvre le vote. Est-ce que quelqu'un s'oppose à l'adoption des règles de procédure? Any opposed to this? Seeing none. Any abstentions? Est-ce qu'il y a des abstentions? Seeing none, none. Okay, so I now declare the, mo the we have someone, but I, we, I now declare the motion uh, to adopt the, the rules of assemblies carried. Thank you. Alors, c'est les règles de l'Assemblée qui vont prévaloir pendant l'Assemblée. Et j'aimerais maintenant reconnaître uh, le microphone numéro un. Microphone number one, please. Merci. Um, just wanted to call a point of privilege. Um, there are no more microphones at the back, and so as a delegate, I, have a, I unfortunately am not bilingual in French and English, um, so it's hard for me to participate without the ability to hear the translation. So I'm just pointing that out that um, I and probably other delegates won't be able to hear the translation with the audio because they just inform me that mm. they have no more. Thank and you. I, and I think that's a barrier for many delegates to be able to participate. Thank you. This is a really important comment you just made, and thank you to inform us. So, and I will accept this. I'll do both in French and in English. 
until such time that uh, we buy <laughs> more uh, headset or devices, but maybe uh, I'll, I'll be waiting for someone to uh, let me know or to inform me that um, everyone that wishes to, um, to uh, have a headset is in a situation to have one. Thank you. So, microphone number two, please. Uh, good morning. My name is Regina Crowchild. I'm proxy for Chief Whitney. I'd like to make a suggestion. I think Harold is sitting over there. Why doesn't he come to the chair and help you in English? <laughs> Thank you so much. We need somebody up there. Oh, we, Thank Harold you. Harold is our friend and we recognize his presence. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so I think um, Harold will be flattered and he shall be <laughs> because we really appreciate him but for the today and the two coming days it's only it's going to be only me and cedric and um, we will also ask for your help and your patience because as you notice we're only two eh? and usually we're three so uh, we will have to rush to the toilet, rush to the many things instead of walking. So if you see us rushing to somewhere, it's because we only need two and it's a, lot of, uh, it's a lot of work for two. But we did it before and you all perfect participants, delegates, and um, you uh, all know the rules now. So I'm pretty sure everything will be perfect. <laughs> Uh, so, thank you very much, and on this, I will turn the floor over to Cédric. Alors, merci beaucoup pour l'adoption de ces règles. Je vais maintenant donner la parole à mon collègue Cédric, qui lui va pouvoir vous présenter l'ordre du jour, le projet d'ordre du jour, et passer à l'adoption ensuite. Merci. Thank you, Wiener. Merci, Wiener. Uh, very unfortunate to hear about uh, the translation devices. <laughs> C'est malheureux d'entendre uh, que les uh, systèmes de traduction ne sont pas disponibles pour tout le monde. Uh, puis on va regarder avec l'équipe pour s'assurer qu'on puisse avoir une solution à ça. So we're going to look with our staff to see what kind of solutions we can have. I'm sorry to translation right now. I know I'm switching, but uh, we've got to do what we've got to do. So for the next uh, part in our procedures, we have to go towards adopting the proposed agenda. The agenda is available on the AFED website. And I do not believe we have it on the screen. L'agenda, uh, c'est la prochaine partie à adopter. Donc, nous allons prendre le temps uh, de faire le tour de l'agenda complet. Par la suite, aller pour une motion, un secondaire, uh, et par la suite, uh, pour adopter l'agenda. So we're going to look towards uh, going through the agenda completely, going to look towards a motion, mover, seconder, and finally adopting the agenda. So for our first day, we're here for three days. First day, we started with the call to order, grand entry, opening prayer, welcome by host officials, territorial welcomes, and the knowledge keepers update. We are now in uh, item number two, test vote adoption of rules and procedures, and adoption of agenda. We will then go on to an address by the AFN National Executive Spokesperson, as well as an address by the National Chief, Roseanne Archibald. Once these are over, the agenda goes towards charter resolutions. So we have draft resolution one and draft resolution two. We will go towards uh, the emergency resolutions after that, special business, investigation and audit, as well as non-conference. We will break for lunch uh, around these times. Again, uh, the chairs will be looking at the schedule as we move forward. Coming back for organizational resolutions. And uh, at the end of the day, a blank and dance for the young family, which was requested by Chief Marcel Head. After this, we will have, as mentioned by Chief Terry Tiji, uh, honoring the AFN delegation that went to the Vatican and end of day one. There's also, at the end of the day, uh, the Doctrine of Recovery premiere, a uh, movie made, a documentary headline by the Academy of Canadian Cinema and Television, award-winning actor Crystal Lightning, uh, which will take place here in the Convention Centre.
I'm going to bring up the French version to read through it in French. And as that's loading, we'll keep going to day two. So day two, we will have uh, the remainder of the AFN Council reports, our Women's Council, our Veterans Council, as well as our National Youth Council. And I want to take the time to recognize uh, my brothers and sisters that I see here helping out with our elders and our veterans. So uh, raise you up. We will have an update on Resolution 13 uh, from 2020. We will go towards the presentation by youth from uh, Oni Gaming First Nation. We will have the resolutions process on support for the Assembly of First Nations Women's Council. We will then move on to one of the regional updates by Regional Chief Cindy Woodhouse from the Manitoba region, go through a bunch of resolutions and uh, towards a wellness break. We'll then have the update by AFN uh, of Quebec and Labrador Regional Chief Justin Picard, a plenary on First Nations policing as an essential service as well as uh, resolutions on a Chief's Committee on Justice. That will be when we break for lunch on day two to come back with an uh, AFN British Columbia region Chief Terry TG update, as well as a plenary on the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Action uh, National Plan. We'll go back through resolutions and then for the rest of the day, resolutions, resolutions, uh, AFN Northwest Territories Regional Chief update, Gerald Antoine, and again, more resolutions if we have the time. And finally, for day three, we will start off with audited financial statements. So we'll have our chief financial officer, as well as Deloitte here, uh, to talk about the audited financial statements. We will have an update from Regional Chief Joanna Barnard from the New Brunswick region, as well as Regional Chief uh, Darlene Bernard and Roderick Gould, who will give us an update on the PEI region. Continue going through updates, resolutions, an update from the AFN Yukon Regional Chief, Kalani Adamek, more resolutions, AFN Regional Chief, Glenn Hare, with his update, resolutions, AFN Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Regional Chief, Paul Prosper, resolutions. Same thing with Saskatchewan. Then on the end of the third day in the afternoon is when we will be having uh, different leaders from the political parties coming to present to the assembly. So we have the Green Party, we have the Honorable Mike Miller, we have the Honorable Paji Haiju, the Honorable David Lametti, as well as Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP. We will then go to closing remarks and closing of the assembly. Pour l'Assemblée en français. Donc la première journée est vraiment basée sur euh, l'ouverture de la rencontre, c'est disponible en ligne sur le site de l'APN. Après ça, les adoptions des règlements et des procédures comme on a aujourd'hui, ainsi que l'agenda. On va aller à euh, une discussion par le chef euh, des représentants de l'exécutif ainsi que par la chef nationale Rosanna Archibald. On va faire des résolutions euh, au travers de la journée et finir avec une cérémonie euh, de couverture pour la famille Young. La deuxième journée, euh, ou pardon, à la fin de la première journée, nous allons avoir euh, une délégation. On va parler avec la délégation du Vatican pour les honorer avec euh, ce qu'ils ont donné pour nous, et ainsi qu'une première d'un film, un documentaire qui a été créé par une jeune Première Nation. Au début de la deuxième journée, nous allons avoir les conseils euh, qui vont venir nous faire leur rapport annuel, ainsi que différentes euh, mises à jour sur la résolution 13 en 2020, ainsi que une présentation euh, de la jeunesse de Onagami First Nation sur euh, l'état d'urgence chez eux. Durant la journée, on va faire des résolutions ainsi que des mises à jour des différents chefs régionaux euh, tout le long. Pour jour numéro 3, c'est là qu'on va avoir euh, les rapports financiers vérifiés et au travers de la journée, nous allons avoir encore les différents chefs régionaux à faire leurs mises à jour ainsi que les résolutions euh, au courant de la journée. À la fin de la troisième journée, c'est là qu'on va accueillir les représentants du ministère fédéral et des différents partis. Donc, le Honorable Mark Miller, l'Honorable Paddy Haiju, l'Honorable David Lemetti et euh, Jagmeet Singh, le directeur ou le président du parti Nouveau, euh, nouveau Parti démocratique. Finalement, nous allons aller vers la fin. <rire> Merci de euh, patienter pour nous. Euh, la traduction... Euh, étant un enjeu en ce moment. On le sait que c'est la réalité dans nos communautés. On n'a pas choisi. Parfait. On va être comme ça pour la prochaine heure. Il devrait y avoir plus de, de machines pour la traduction qui arrivent bientôt. So, 
thank you for uh, understanding that we have a certain reality uh, in which uh, right now we're having issues with translation. In the next hour, we should be getting more devices. So Kel Salem will make sure to address that uh, in the next hour, make sure that everyone can understand each other. So now I need a mover for the agenda to move the motion to adopt the agenda. Do I have a mover in the room? Microphone number one, please. And I move it. Chief Amanda Lees from Whitehorse, Yukon. Chief Amanda Lees, thank you very much for moving. Do I have a seconder? Microphone number two, please. Good morning, Cedric. Doug Kelly, proxy for Chief Randy Leon, Kokakapult. Uh, prepared to uh, second the motion to adopt the agenda, but I have some friendly amendments. Uh, and if I may uh, comment on the reason for those amendments. Thank you. I love the theme of the meeting, walking the healing path. Now, there's a cynic within me. He can be really sarcastic and he loves to fight. So part of me, when I read that, I thought, wow, we're gonna pick a fight. We're going to have a fight in front of Canada and the world, and then we're going to start walking the healing path. But I heard my brother Terry TG this morning saying, we have so much to heal from COVID-19 and what it's done to us, how we've been isolated from our children, our grandchildren, our families, our workplaces, those that we love what it's done to our mental and physical health. Some of us went through a heat dome. Holy smokes. That led to wildfires. Now we're looking at high waters, flooding. Not to mention residential schools. Not to mention all the other troubles social, economic, cultural, and spiritual that our people face each and every day. That's what we're walking the healing path from. I do not want this assembly to add to the burden of healing. And when I look at the agenda, there's a real opportunity for us to add to that burden of healing. And I would hope that we can exercise lateral kindness, not lateral violence. <laughs> Chief Charlene Bellew, many of you will know her from Esquet. She had an elder, uh, I cannot remember Fred's last name but Fred put together commitment sticks for chiefs and leaders in British Columbia. And what we're committing to do is to practice lateral kindness and in a good way, challenge and confront lateral violence in a good way. And we heard that from our host chiefs they set a very high standard for how we carry ourselves while we're in their house, while we're in their homelands. They've asked us to be respectful. They've asked us to listen. They've asked us to be understanding. They've asked us to be forgiving. And I think that's really important for us to remember. And so I heard uh, the national chief this morning tell us she loves us. Well, Roseanne, I love you too. I also love every one of your colleagues. Some of them have been around longer than me. Oh my Lord, Gislan, where have we been? I was saying to the BC chiefs yesterday, you know you're getting old 
when you started in First Nations leadership roles before some of the chiefs today were born. And yes, Derek, I'm talking about you. Uh, Derek App, I always tease him at home, young chief, go get her. So with that said, uh, Cedric, the charter resolutions. I don't think we should deal with them on the first day. I don't think they should be our first order of business. They actually don't lay out a replacement to the Confederacy. So I think we should put them at the back end of the agenda, the very last two resolutions we deal with. For 20 years, we've not followed the Confederacy. Why would we follow it today? And does it have to be fixed today? Uh -uh. It does not. Can we give ourselves permission to put it off? Yes, we can. And should we? Absolutely. So let's put that resolution off to the very end. And if we don't get it, oh, shucks. There's always another assembly. So that's my advice is that we move those two resolutions uh, to the very end, DR1 and DR2 be the very last two resolutions considered by this assembly. That we deal with ER3 and whatever the outcome of ER3, that we then do not need ER number two. ER3 is really clear. And if ER3 is carried, then it's really, really clear. And if it's defeated, it's also clear that we do not need ER number two. So my advice is that we uh, not accept the agenda with ER2 as part of the agenda. And I'm prepared uh, to, second, uh, to second a motion that, that sets out that approach to our, our work. I know that every one of you here is here because you love the people. You're not here for the pay. You're not here for fame and glory. Proxy Kelly, You're here because you, you love the up. people. And so our organization's in trouble. We have to fix it. But we have to fix it with love kindness and respect. Thank you, Brox Kelly. I allowed a bit more time, uh, but we'll be sticking to the three minutes for our next speakers. Uh, so, Proxy Kelly made uh, the proposed amendment that Charter Resolutions DR1 and DR2 be pushed back to the third day, as well as reviewing the necessity of having uh, emergency resolution number two. I look towards our mover. Uh, with regards to the adopted procedures, however, uh, Section 28 does state that charter amendments are, should be first order in uh, our agenda. So I would look towards our mover, who is Amanda Lees. Where are you hidden? <laughs> I need to find our mover for the agenda. Is that microphone one now? Her one would be a is informing me, thank you, uh, that due to the rules and procedures that were adopted as they are uh, with Section 28, clearly specifying that uh, charter amendments or anything that affects the charter must be uh, first order, that uh, the proposed amendment uh, shouldn't be accepted uh, and that we should move on. A decision of the chair uh, to see that. Looking for amendment uh, with regards to ER02. 
to remove uh, Emergency Resolution 2, non-confidence, uh, from the agenda. If I go towards my mover, sorry for making you sit up and down. Microphone one, please. I'm okay with that. Thanks. So, uh, an amendment to remove ER02 and uh, to adopt the agenda. Hope it's faster, you know? No? Let's see, read non confidence. But I'm being informed by my co-chair that uh, this motion is really to adopt the agenda. Uh, the resolutions that were accepted as late or as emergency, as well as draft resolutions, have gone through a vetting process, have gone through a system. So it'll be up to the mover and seconder to choose if they withdraw their own uh, resolutions once we get there. Uh, however, your comments are uh, recognized uh, in the record. If I can go to microphone one for a mover. Hi, sorry, I just have one amendment. And um, can we have a break at two on the agenda, please? It's a weird amendment, I know, but. We'll make sure to, to call for breaks and the chairs do have that power to call recess uh, whenever we want. So uh, we'll take sure uh, to have a break around that time. Thank you, mover. Microphone two. Good morning. Saigo se wigwego and wache during Cardinal Summers, Unyets, Haudenosaunee, Tayandanega, Onkwahami, Shaplo Cree First Nation, proxy chief for Keter Corson. I want to thank the pipe carriers this morning for lifting pipe, the elder for the prayer, and acknowledge the land that we're on. Um, I think it's a really important time that we hear from the national chief which we haven't had. We heard from the regional chiefs, so I would like to put that on the agenda. Also, too, I would like to call a point of order on the gutting of the charter in some of the amendments that are occurring in our package. There's a charter renewal committee that's reviewing. We haven't had proper analysis done. And I think we as, as voters and members here that we need to have that information. I don't think it's correct to bring things like the, the gutting of the Confederacy of Nations without any proper analysis and any path forward other than the executive chiefs. We see that there, this place is in turmoil and a lot of it is caused by, by the infighting that's happening here. It's a little bit of an embarrassment for me as a First Nation person and I think that those things should be completely removed off the agenda until a proper analysis is done and the investigations are completed. Thank you. Thank you, Proxy. Uh, this falls into the same category. So for your first comment on uh, having the chance to address the assembly, this is our next item on the agenda. So that is by both the executive and by National Chief Roseanne Archibald. As to your point of order for uh, the resolutions regarding the charter, uh, as mentioned prior, uh, they went through the proper vetting process. They have been uh, evaluated by the resolutions committee as being valid uh, resolutions. However, once again, they will be brought to the stage and uh, we can see uh, where we go once we get to that step. If I could go looking towards Zoom, there's no one. I'll allow for two more questions, and then we'll have to uh, keep moving on for the adoption of the agenda. So if I can go to microphone one. Uh, Chief Doris Bill, Yukon. Um, I uh, would like that uh, if, if we must deal with the charter resolutions uh, first, I would like that uh, we have the break uh, be long enough for us to deliberate these resolutions. This is the first time some of us are seeing these resolutions and 
Uh, we are still getting updated in, on some of the information. And these resolutions go to the core of this organization. And we need to make an informed decision as a region as to what we would like to do. So I, I really would like the time to be able to deliberate these resolutions properly. Please, thank you. Thank you, uh, Doris Bill. Through microphone number two for our final speaker, please. Uh, miigwech. Wendy Jonko, Algonquin Sepikwaktagon First Nation from Ontario. And just to agree with the previous uh, uh, second last speaker there that uh, the National Chief, we have not heard from her no. and she must be given time to summarize her annual no. report. And I do not have an updated agenda, so if somebody could uh, perhaps bring me a hard copy, I'd really appreciate that. Miigwech. Thank you, Chief Jaco. So I'm being made informed uh, on that subject that copies of agenda are available uh, outside the room, I believe at the registration table, uh, so you can have access to those. They're available on the website also uh, that you see. As for uh, an opportunity to address, that has already been uh, addressed by the chair. So we have our mover, we have our seconder. I will look towards uh, the assembly, look towards our Zoom poll too, if you can open that up. Thank you, Technic. And see, is anyone opposed to the agenda? I see opposition. So we do not have consensus. So we will have to go towards a vote on motion to adopt the agenda. So those in opposition, please raise your lanyards and hold them above your head uh, so that our counting team at distribution can have the time. As for our chiefs who are on Zoom, you now have the poll that is up on screen, as can be seen uh, behind me. So please select your for, against, or abstain votes uh, and click submit. Do not forget to click submit or else uh, your vote will not be registered. We'll wait on our distribution team to finish the count. You're voting on the motion to adopt the agenda. And these are people who are opposed uh, to the adoption of the agenda. For opposition. Perfect, perfect. So once again, Motion to adopt the agenda. People who are opposed to adopting the agenda. Remind people on Zoom that you have to vote for, against, or abstain, and then uh, click on your submit button. I'll look towards the support staff. Is anyone on the phone lines right now? If you can get me that information, please. Distribution team. We're good. Perfect. So you can lower your lanyards. Thank you for that. Now those who wish to abstain from the motion to adopt the agenda as proposed by the executive. If you could raise your lanyards. Seeing none. Those who are for the adoption of the agenda as proposed. Again, please keep your lanyards up as our distribution staff counts.
that we have no one on the phone lines. So we'll be looking towards our Zoom and our uh, members. Please remain uh, with your hands up for those who are for the adoption of the agenda as presented. Perfect. So our distribution team has finished their account. You can lower your hands as the numbers are being compiled. We will wait uh, to see whether the motion to adopt the agenda has been approved or defeated. that we will be having paper copies of this agenda available for chiefs in the back uh, and outside the room if it's not already done uh, by lunchtime. could close the Zoom poll too, so that we can have final results from the Zoom platform. Hmm? Our staff is compiling uh, the data as we speak, and again, uh, for translation services, I might go over uh, the French. Fait que, donc, on a voté sur la motion pour l'adoption de l'agenda. Uh, pendant que notre équipe de distribution sont en train de calculer et mettre ensemble tous les résultats des différents comptes, ainsi que les personnes qui sont sur Zoom. Uh, on n'a personne sur les lignes téléphoniques. Fait que ça nous donne juste deux uh, systèmes à regarder pour l'instant. Moi, j'ai vu. On a le compte qui s'en vient. As we wait on official results, uh, from seeing the amount of hands uh, that were raised for, we could adopt uh, temporarily uh, the motion to adopt the agenda so that we can proceed uh, with matters for today, seeing the time uh, it is already. Uh, and move forward, we will come back though with the final official votes, uh, seeing the numbers we have on Zoom, as well as the hands that were raised. Uh, we can for now, uh, move on to our next agenda item. We will give you the official count uh, in just a few moments. Perfect. So as we're waiting on uh, the final numbers, we'll move on to our next uh, section in the agenda, which is the addressing of the assembly by our executive spokespersons, as well as National Chief Roseanne Archibald. So I would look towards uh, the two representatives for the national executives, the spokespersons, Regional Chief Prosper and Regional Chief Joanna Bernard, 
to come address the assembly. You will have 30 minutes, and the national chief will have 30 minutes uh, after. If we could have that set up on the timer, please. Thank you, technical staff. So, Regional Chief Joanna Bernard and Regional Chief Paul Prosper. Gwei, Ninaptuk, Ach Bajazi, Ach Walia Sikbul. In Delusi, Sagamal, Paul Prosper, Delewin, Bakungam, Mi'kmaq Nation. I am honored to be here on this host territory. I want to recognize Elder Gwendolyn Point, the host drum, those who have offered their guidance to this forum, to be respectful, to heed to the teachings of this land, and to the principle of healing. I also want to recognize the National Chief's comments in her opening address of love, which is something that I have been thinking about for some time. This morning on my way down here, in times like this, I offer tobacco in prayer to help me to find the words, to guide my words, to allow me to find a balance between my heart and my mind. Regional Chief Joanna Bernard will be providing a bit of a sequence to some of the events, but I will pick up a bit on some events before this AGA involving a court application brought forward by the National Chief. Regarding the decision we have made as an executive, and our decision is there in draft resolution number three. It calls for a temporary suspension, suspension of the national chief from her role as chairperson of the company, the National Indian Brotherhood. Also, her employment status with the National Indian Brotherhood, but also her role and function as National Chief. This was not an easy decision. It has been based on much discussion amongst our executive, many long days, many long nights. A lot of my um, colleagues, regional chiefs, have been dealing with a number of questions from you, leadership, and rightfully so. And so, when you look at these resolutions before you, there's a spectrum on one side of the spectrum, you're going to see a resolution that seeks full reinstatement of the national chief, the call for a forensic audit, the call for an investigation into the toxic work environment at the AFN. On the other side of the spectrum, you'll see a resolution for a vote of non-confidence. 
But there is a path, a middle path, which is our resolution, a resolution born from the many discussions and deliberations of my colleagues here, the executive committee. And that's dress, draft resolution number three. It is what we believe to be the middle ground. For you as the chiefs in assembly to validate our decision to allow this temporary suspension of the national chief to continue until we get the results of an investigation which is ongoing as we speak. We always look to the authority as the executive of the chiefs in assembly. It's outlined in the charter. We recognize that, but we had no alternative with the facts that were presented to us and with the advice we relied upon from our lawyers. We suggest that we follow this middle path. The decision is yours to make, and there will be much dialogue and discussion that will ensue from this event. There are a number of stories a number of narratives that surround this investigation and suspension. And there is a truth to be had through the findings of the investigation. That will take time. That will take time for interviews with the complainants, interviews with the national chief, interviews with the witnesses from a very trained and dedicated individual tasked with uncovering the truth. And with this truth, we can move forward. We can chart our path and deal with many of the immediate issues that we have faced upon us at this assembly here. My colleagues, as part of the executive, sit as a board within the company, the National Indian Brotherhood. As a board, we are under a sacred duty, a legal duty to make and to make decisions that are in the best interests of the company to create and maintain a safe work environment and to also express our faith and our belief and our trust in the many staff members who are part of that organization that are doing an exceptional job every day I know these issues are tough. Within my own chief caucuses, with the chiefs within Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, people are torn, especially the women chiefs. They are torn with these events. And I really feel for them I feel for everyone at this time, but there is a path forward. There is like a disruption in our family, and we need to take that pause to reset and regain our balance. Currently, we are in court proceedings. There was a court proceeding just before this AGA, where an application was made 
by the national chief for that court to reinstate her as national chief. What we told the court was that decision does not rest with that judge within that courtroom. That decision rests with you. And that court agreed with us. We're going to be talking and you're going to be hearing about legal liabilities. Many of you have heard that term, liability.